So that was the last final in Belgium where Johan Christoffersen uh, went out on top and he is leading the championship by 41 points. Is he perhaps going to become world champion for the fifth time today? Right, it's time for Super Pole. It's one timed lap. They go out in reverse championship order and the driver with the fastest lap gets to choose their grid position for heat one. Uh, Johan Christofferson has been pretty dominant uh, this year in Super Pole. Uh, will one of the others manage to uh, to beat him today? So let's uh, start Super Pole and head up to our commentators, Nick and Hal. Many thanks, Molly. Now let's have a quick update on the championship standings. 41 points clear with only three races left to go this season. And that means that uh, a victory here today for Johan Christofferson in the doubleheader this weekend will secure the Swedish driver his fifth FIA World Rallycross Championship. Now, of course, the Hansen brothers, Gronholm, will be doing everything they possibly can to try and take that battle for the championship as long and as late into the last three rounds as possible. But in the form that Christofferson is, particularly coming off the back of doing the double in uh, Belgium, it's very difficult to bet against him. Here we go with the Super Pole round. We will go in reverse championship order. With the first man getting into grid position is the German René Munich. Now, René Munich, a team owner, a successful entrepreneur, an experienced driver. And René Munich, who has placed uh, three times in sixth position this season, looking to end on a high note. Remember, it's just one lap against the clock to determine the grid positions in the heats will come fast and furiously throughout the morning and into the afternoon, live here in Spain on RX+. And away René Munich goes. It's a 1,125-metre 1 track, 12 corners, 60% asphalt, 40% gravel. The set of Ifa running quite soft there through the first corner. You see the nose of the car rising through that left-hander. Doesn't quite get the rotation done early in turn two. Carl looks a bit nervous on the exit. Comes towards this big jump that you land into the braking area. This is uh, a real challenge for the RX1E cars in the setup this season. Through the Joe Clap section, each of the cars in this Super Pole session will launch away from the line because the launch is such a critical phase in Rallycross. That's part of this Super Pole lap and they're taking the Joker on this occasion. That gets mixed up at each of the venues we go to so far this season. Bit of understeer for Munich into this latter phase of the lap. And now it's all about getting the braking right into the final corner to get a good drive to the finish line. And round he goes to finish it up. There's the checkered flag. It's uh, 1 minute 01.233 seconds for René Munich, who sets the early pace as we work our way through the championship order with our current leader, Christofferson, being the last man to drive this one lap against the clock. So René Munich sets the pace, and it is Clara Anderson who's up next. First time here in Barcelona for me. The track looks super nice, has a lot of history to it, and I can't wait to drive on it this weekend. Well, as a rookie to the RX1 E Series, there is no question of a doubt the highlight of Clara Anderson's season to date was her podium on the 18th of September in the World RX of Portugal, where she became the first woman at this level of World Championship competition to take a podium place. And as a rookie, it was a very, very impressive performance indeed. We saw that it was potentially coming in the season opener in Norway. Can she finish on a high note with just three rounds to go to wrap up the season? Clara Anderson is next on grid.
good launch from the CE dealer machine, the PWR RX1 E. Clara gets the car nicely turned into the first corner. A bit of a four wheel drift through the latter phase, but doesn't get too sideways on the exit. See her working away at the pedals. This is a brand new track for her this weekend. Gets a lot of over rotation done in the middle of the corner, just avoids that barrier on the right hand side. Good save using all of the instant torque deployment from this all electric machine down to the Joker lap section. This is 6A and then 6B, a really technical couple of corners. You've got to get the first part of the corner right to maximize the exit and drive up this hill. You can't see how steep that hill is on the television cameras all the way down to this very, very fast left-hand corner. Anyone that's played this circuit on the, the dirt games knows how difficult that corner is to carry the momentum and balance the car. And then it's all about the braking on this really slippery gravel into the final corner. Renny Munich made quite a big mistake there. Clara is significantly better through there. I think we'll go quicker. A lot quicker, Hal. Well called. Over eight tenths of a second, the right side of the clock for Clara Anderson, 22-year-old uh, Swedish driver from the equipment, the CE equipment dealer team. And uh, Clara Anderson uh, keeping that momentum on that very difficult closing corner, corner 12 into the chequered flag. Well, from the first of the two rookies to the second, up next is the 19-year-old sensation, another Swedish driver, it's Gustav Bertram. Looking forward to drive at this track because of the big jump and the cool joker. Big jump, cool joker indeed. Coming off the back of a double podium performance in Spa, Belgium, uh, Gustav Bergstrom is going from strength to strength. The uh, third driver with the uh, KMS team, not counting for team championship points, but he's been putting some impressive results on the table. There is no question, this 19-year-old Swedish driver brimming with confidence after that double podium just a couple of weeks ago. Bergstrom could be the spoiler in the pack, but will do everything that he can to support his mentor and championship leader, fellow Volkswagen driver, Johan Christofferson. Here's Bergstrom trying to beat the time set by Clara Anderson at 1 minute, 0.327 seconds. Oh, and that's a jump start for Gustav Bergström. We've seen that already this year. That will be an immediate disqualification from the session, I think. I think he knows that. The KMAS team know the rule book inside out. We saw Ola Christian Baby jump the start in Norway. He's reversing back, but if I'm correct, then I think that is him going to be sent back to the paddock. That is a huge disappointment for Gustav Bergström as one of the rookies. Track time uh, is absolutely vital to Bergström. OK, so he's being lined up again. I wonder if there was an issue with the lights, perhaps, because, uh, yeah, I thought he would be not restarting. Bergstrom is finally away here in his one lap of Super Bowl. And it's the starts where he's been so impressive this season, isn't it? He, you know, Johan Christofferson was saying he was the, I can't remember the term he used, but the start genius in Riga, made it to the first corner very quickly, and that's critical to the Super Bowl laps. Bit of understeer through the middle part of turn two, and then gets very sideways, just misses the wall there, just like Clara Anderson did last time out over the jumps, get into the break for this uh, right-hander and then down onto the brakes for the left. Turns in early, gets a bit of rotation done on the exit. Nicely driven there from Gustav Bergström. Runs to the outside of the circuit, now to the inside. Don't have to worry about any cars around you in this session. Very unusual for a Radicos driver. And then into this latter phase of the lap where it's so difficult to set the cars up for the engineers and the drivers. Little nip of the handbrake now to get the rotation done on the loose surface section, driving down to the finish line. He's going quicker than Anderson so far. Clearly the focus was wobbled at the start, but this is Bergstrom going under a minute. Oh, over, but he's just enough. Just under half a second quicker than Clara Anderson. Gustav Bergstrom for the uh, Christofferson Motorsport team in the Volkswagen RX1E goes to the top of the table. I think we should see that one minute mark bettered very shortly. But good, good start, good drive for Gustav Bergstrom with Timmy Hansen up next.
Barcelona is a fantastic track, very high grip, and I, I love this place. I've, I've had great success here, great battles, and uh, now we'll go out to Super Pole, one lap to put everything together. Well, uh, Timmy Hansen has already told us about the setup that he's been working on for the Peugeot 208 coming into this eighth round of the season. He was runner-up to his younger brother, Kevin, in this race a year ago, but he's a former winner here back in 2019 and part of the doubleheader in 2020. He said it himself, Timmy Hansen loves this track and surely there's a little bit of lady luck riding with this car over the next uh, 48 hours. Timmy, who's come so close to climbing to the top step on the podium this season, only to be denied by no fault of his own. Now, it's an interesting grid position that Timmy Hansen has uh, chosen. He's been starting right on the outside throughout the two practice sessions earlier today, but expect Bergstrom's target time of 1 minute 0.106 seconds to be bettered here. Timmy Hansen loves this track with the new setup of the Peugeot 208. Timmy surely will go top and will he be faster than Christofferson to go with it? Timmy choosing a different grid slot right on the outside there in five. Gives him a better line into the opening corner. Runs the car almost to the outside of the road. Very different turn, uh, turn one to what we'd seen previously for last year. Minimises the carnage now. Very patient from Hansen there on the throttle through the loose surface section. Doesn't get overly sideways like we saw Clara Anderson and Gustav Bergstrom do in their own runs. I've since found out that you're now allowed one jump start in each of the Super Pole runs, so uh, my bad. Not quite as up-to-date with that as uh, the, the, the Super Pole concept has evolved quite a lot over the course of the season, hasn't it? So uh, Bergstrom has been allowed to maintain his time currently fastest because he got that second start permitted, and this is where Timmy Hansen was talking about it being so difficult to set the car up, but as we would expect, he's significantly quicker than the drivers that have gone so far. He's the first of the big hitters in this session. Beautiful racing lines in the opening part of the challenge and wraps it up very nicely indeed. Look at that, 58.464, over 1.6 seconds quicker than the three drivers uh, before him. That is a great start to the day's campaign for Timmy Hansen. Comfortably top of the table with Niklas Gronholm, the next driver to take to the track. So, nice to be back in Barcelona. A track with a uh, good mix of gravel and tarmac. Quite fast, technical, not easy to nail, but uh, really good fun. So we've already seen Nicholas's father, uh, Marcus, the two times uh, World Rally Champion, out on course. Now it's his son's time. 26-year-old uh, Finnish driver, a winner on tour this season. Uh, Gronholm, of course, taking the full 20 points in round five of the championship in uh, Portugal. That was his seventh uh, World RX win against his name. Perhaps more importantly, second to Johan Christofferson in our last stop of the championship in Spa, Belgium. Uh, that runner-up spot earning Gronholm 16 points, taking him up to fourth in the championship standings. But there are just three points separating Kevin Hansen, baby Gronholm and Timmy Hansen. It's a very important 48 hours and two days of racing here for the Flying Finn. The target time is set by Timmy Hansen at 58.464 seconds with Niklas Gronholm in the PWR, ready to race. Not too much wheel spin for Gronholm away from the line. Doesn't run as wide to the outside of the track as Hansen did. Made a couple of inputs there on the way into the corner and holds a much tighter line than Timmy Hansen did on the exit. Different style from Nicholas Gronholm. He was throwing the car around a lot during the opening three practice sessions, but very neat and tidy through the exit of two, up to the jump, rides the brakes there on the way up to the jump. That's just to settle the car before it takes off so you can maximize the landing. Watch the brake lights flicking on, riding it with the left foot a little bit just to get the nose back in again on the exit of turn 6B there in the Joe Collapse section. 
see the wheels opening up through that very long corner and then into this really difficult left-hander. Bit of understeer followed by oversteer, then understeer again. Over that little bump into the loose surface section. No use of the handbrake there from Nicholas Gronholm. Runs a little bit wide coming down to the line. I don't think this is going to be enough to better Timmy Hansen's time. Let's watch that clock carefully. Gronholm stops the chequered flag and the clock at 58.878. It is very close indeed. Uh, just over four tenths of a second slower than Timmy Hansen. Gronholm goes into second position. Timmy Hansen in the Peugeot 208 at the top of the table. That target time is 58.464. As we now move into the top three drivers in the World Championship standings. And the first of the trio is Oli Christian Vaby. So the track here in Barcelona is really cool. It's a track where I have good memories from back in 2015. Really technical, you really have to be precise and the jump is crucial. So uh, it's, it's a great track for, for rallycross and, um, and uh, super exciting. <laughs> Well, Vaby, who made a welcomed return to World Rallycross after seven years in the World Rally Championship, uh, has gone from strength to strength. His season so impressive with uh, four podiums from seven races for OC Baby. He's a former winner here in the circuit of Barcelona de Catalunya. Uh, in the Euro RX series uh, back in 2015. Those memories he will remember and will carry those into this Super Bowl one lap challenge against the clock. Still at the top of the table, Timmy Hansen, who sets the target time at 58.464 seconds. Baby, lying third in the championship standings, is ready to go. Great job from the KMS team to get this car going after it stopped during the second part of free practice earlier on. I'm sure we're going to see some fantastic Ola Christian Vaby sideways style here from his rallying background. He just can't help himself but get a lot of rotation done, but makes the car work very well for it. Look, the car's very sideways compared to both Hansen and Gronheim before, but has great pace there through turn two, carries good momentum over the jump, but he's looking down again. I think they've got another problem. Yes, they do. Let's have a look at the side of the car. Is the red light flashing on? Oh, so frustrating for OC Vaby. He had such bad fortune, and it is bad fortune that his car is the one that keeps breaking down in these free practice and super pole sessions. He's missed so much running this year with little technical problems. I'm sure the team will work super hard to try and get that solved for heat one. He just needs to be a little bit further down the road there to get free of the track. The green light's back on again there. Green light means the car's safe to, to interact with, to touch. That's an indication for all of the officials and the marshals. We've all had this uh, electric motorsport training now about how to treat these, uh, these new cars. And he's finally got it going again. Is he going to... Looks to me like he's going to try and complete the lap. Although he is, but... That seems a little futile because he's going to be serviced by some margin. But of course, someone could crash yet. And by him finishing the lap, he would be ahead of them by default. So, yeah, sensible to do it. Although, looks to me like the car is rolling to a stop again. The problems seem to be initiated from the landing off the jump, Hal. It was a very heavy, hard hit. It was out of the, the final corner in free practice, wasn't it? And although there's a bit of a bump there at the end of the, the track, it's not quite as hard as the, the jump landing. I think you're, you're right. We see lots of issues with, with yep. cars on jump landing because it's a massive shock. Although the suspension's very good, it's a big load on the car to land from jumps. But I'm, I'm surprised by these problems. And it's not a criticism of, of anybody, but the KMS team are amongst the best in the business. So it must be a very specific issue, or maybe it's a totally different issue that they haven't managed to, to solve it because I'm sure they've checked everything. OC. Clearly not very pleased with uh, with that. The green light's on, but he's got no pace. So it's hard to know. And of course, I don't know what's going on from here, but it's not like the car's gone into uh, shutdown mode and, it, and it's gone red um, like we've seen so many times this year. So the green light's on, the car's, the car's safe, and he's driving, but just very slowly. Big disappointment for OC Vaby, but the Super Pole continues with uh, Vaby just trying to get his uh, Volkswagen out of position. 
It's uh, almost a repeat story of his uh, technical issues from the last two rounds at the doubleheader in Spa, Belgium. That's the most pace he's had out of the car since the first couple of corners. A frustrating start to the day for O.C. Vaby. Next up in the battle for top position in Super Bowl is Kevin Hansen. Barcelona track super tight, a lot of tire barriers, very technical, but so many good memories from last year winning the race. And of course, the race that he won here last year was the season opener in uh, Barcelona. Let's hope that he can find the magic chasing his brother. No team rules. Of course, from the handsome World RX team between the two brothers, they wish each other the best. They hope either one of them wins. And this weekend, they're hoping that either one of them can stop Johan Christofferson uh, walking away with the title before we get to the finale at the Nürburgring next month. But if Kevin Hansen can find the magic and the car works with him, we all know he is a force to be reckoned with. And Kevin Hansen, who was part of the Hansen brothers, won two here last season looking to do exactly the same today, all starting with the Super Pole performance, looking to beat his brother's time, 58.464. Just like his brother, Kevin Hansen choosing uh, the fifth slot on the grid, turns in a bit earlier than Timmy did, right to the wall on the inside. Doesn't run as wide on the exit as Timmy did either, and now it's about breaking into turn two. You can see the clean line is already developing up there is uh, this is actually turn three at such a long corner. It's got it's got two numbers up to the jump again, riding the brake with the left foot on the uh, the takeoff. Kevin really grimacing at the wheel, working hard here. Lost three temps though to Timmy in that opening sector, so not going quite as well for this sister car in the Hanson Motorsport team running to the middle sector, which is up here. It's Gained a lot back there actually on Timmy, so had a good exit on the uh, out of the Joker lap section 6B. Uh, the Joker lap corner is, and then it's fighting the car down to the final turn. Get a bit of rotation done on the way in, but that wall is so long on the inside, you have to wait, wait, wait up to the line. Oh, it's close, but not quick enough, and it's only good enough for third position uh, for Kevin Hansen. A huge flight off the jump, and that will have added to some of that time lost. 59.208 is the official time given, uh, almost three quarters of a second off the pace of uh, Timmy Hansen, who still sets that target time. And uh, Kevin Hansen, well, a little bit of uh, work to do right now, lying third in the Super Pole standings. But of course, it's the next driver that everybody wants to see unbeaten in Super Pole this season, winning six out of seven races, hoping to wrap up the World Championship title today rather than at the Nürburgring next month. Of course, Johan Christofferson. A track with very different track conditions uh, in terms of grip level. Tarmac is always very high grip as a Formula 1 track and the gravel can be super slippery, especially if it's damp. So you need to be super tidy in the hairpins and you need to be brave on the fast sections on the backside. So it's a very exciting track. And on board with our championship leader, looking to lift his fifth world championship title this weekend here in uh, Barcelona. Recording his 33rd career win in the last round of the championship, the second of the two races at Spa in Belgium. He looked right on form, I have to say, in the practice session earlier today, as he described in his interview before the start of this uh, Super Bowl, you have to be very quick on point. It's tight, it's fast, it's technical, but all of those skills Johan Christofferson has in abundance. Looking to beat Timmy Hansen once again, 58.464 the target time. Here is our championship leader with his one lap of Super Bowl. How often this year have we seen uh, Johan Christofferson on the back foot a little bit, free free practice, and then absolutely nail a lap in Super Bowl. We saw just that last time out in Spa, but this time he had a good margin in free practice earlier on today in this Catalan Sun, riding on board with the Swede, gets a bit sideways on the exit of turn three there, up to the jump, lands nicely 
in the run down to that right hander and then he's going to break hard into the left get some rotation done on the way in the rear of the polo steps out drives up the hill runs right to the outside of the circuit just kisses the gravel on the outside this is a man who is perfect at finding those margins not quite as quick as Timmy Hansen in the middle sector of the lap. This is going to be very, very close at the end of this section. Down the hill, this is all about optimising the rotation into the final corner. Christofsen's pushing really hard to try and get that option of choosing pole for the first heat later on today. And he's there. It is a 58.285, just at 0.179 seconds quicker. Absolutely brilliant again from Christofsen. Well, look at the body language. He's shaking his head. It wasn't as smooth or as clean as perhaps he wanted, but it's still good enough to go top of the table, still maintain that unbeaten track record in the Super Pole round. And perhaps most importantly is that he will get to choose exactly where he wants to start in that first heat uh, later today. It's a spectacular start to what could be a massive day for Johan Christofferson. Sorry, guys. So confirmation that the Super Bowl fastest time, and it's the perfect start for Christofferson. Timmy Hansen is the second quickest, Nicholas Gronholm third, then Kevin Hansen, Bergstrom, Clara Anderson, Rene Munich, and technical issues once again for Oli Christian Vaby. Now, we will be back at 12.45 local time here in Spain with all of the action from the RX1E Heat 1. Until then, on behalf of all of the team, many thanks for your company. It's goodbye for now. The FIA World Rallycross app enables you, the fans, to watch RX Plus anytime and anywhere as we enter a new electric era for the sport. Registered RX subscribers can sign in with their account details and watch hundreds of hours of exclusive World RX action live or on demand in amazing HD quality. With simple navigation, users can catch up with all the latest news, follow the race results, check the championship standings and enjoy free video clips.